you know, I've been thinking about this for a while. Is he goes too much upset with the AIFF? Hi, I'm Akash Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. Welcome to Half Folly, where we hit the Indian football news as soon as it bounces off the ground. Let's get straight into VAR, aka very articled review of the week. Let's start this off with some sad news. As the franchise FC Pune City have now finally shut operations, Vadavun Group, the group that owned FC Pune City, have sold uh, all the rights and well, the whole club to Varun Tripura Neni and Vijay Maduri, and the club will now shift its operations to Hyderabad. It might be called Hyderabad FC, but the name is still in works. Sad, sad day. This makes FC Pune City the fourth top tier Indian football club to shut down in Pune. Maybe it's something about Pune. Bharat FC, it happened to them, BSK Shivajins and then Pune FC as well. But hey, maybe it's just how football is in this country. Sad, sad day. But again, we've got a new franchisee coming in, new owners who are willing to put in a little more money into Indian football, gamble with their money a little, if you want to call it that. Uh, the roster of players essentially remains the same, so Hyderabad FC will not have to buy new players if that is something that you were confused about. They will obviously look for better foreign signings, maybe some will, let, uh, will be let go. But I think overall they'll be fine. Coach Phil Brown might also be retained, which is great for them because I think he's a great coach who could do wonderful things in the ISL. Hyderabad as a city, I think, deserves a top tier football club. For the Hyderabad, the AFC was already there, so maybe taking over that club and making it into a huge, a huge club would have been the best way to go about it. But maybe I'm connecting dots that don't really exist. But hey, open to hearing your thoughts on this. Are you sad about FC Pune City start shutting down? And uh, do you think a club in Hyderabad would do well? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Indian national team footballer Amarjeet Singh KM has been ruled out from FIFA World Cup qualifiers against Oman and Qatar, which are set to happen on September 5 and September 10, respectively. This, in my opinion, is a major, major blow because Amarjeet is someone that Egos to Match likes quite a lot. And, well, the way Indian football team now plays, a lot of it revolves around Amarjeet Singh KM. He's that dynamic center defensive midfielder who likes to run a lot. He has an unmatched engine in the Indian football team, especially in the midfield. And with Prana Holder already been released, doesn't really give us too many options in the center defensive department. Who do we really have now? Vinit Rai and Rainier Fernandez. Them two fighting it out, I think Amarjeet was just the ideal option. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of thinking that Egos to Match will have to do. How big an impact do you think that guy could have, his absence could have? And who do you think can really fill a spot? And also, do you think Adil is finally going to acquire that center defensive spot? Leave it out in the comments down below. Indian football team coach Igor Strimach has come out and blasted ISL and I-League for the number of foreigners that they have. And well, who can blame him? I think what he has said is pretty spot on, so I'm just going to read out his quote to you so that you understand where he's really coming from. He said, If you consider there are 10 teams in the ISL, a league where all top Indian players feature, there are 50 foreigners on the field. That leaves me with 60 players with Indian passports in the starting 11. From these players, 11 are goalkeepers, 22 are fullbacks, and the rest of them are defensive midfielders. So, it comes back to the same thing, doesn't it? Ever since Igor Stimach and Duru Asik have come to Indian football, this is all we've been talking about. Indian footballers do not play enough. And it's, well, it's a conversation I'm glad is finally happening because, well, it's been the elephant in the room and nobody really talked about it because everyone was so taken aback by the glitz and glamour of the ISL. But I think it's time to dial back. I think Indian Super League has dialed back quite a lot because I think it's only a well-marketed version of the I-League now. But still, I think bringing down the number of foreigners, increase the quality, but reduce the number of foreigners in the ISL. It'll give opportunities to more young Indian players out there and it'll only do better for the national team. I think the coach is absolutely spot on. I'm slightly surprised by how vocal he has been uh, over the whole thing and how freely he speaks about the issues, which really impresses me. He also kind of proposed a solution to the whole thing, which is something that I and a lot of Indian football fans out there would agree with. We need to speed up and adopt a 3 plus 1 rule, which is an accepted idea of foreign policy for best Asian countries. If you want to get there, we must follow that. Now, we've talked about this on Half Folly in previous episodes, and when I asked you about this, a lot of you, which surprised me quite a lot, a lot of you were in favour of having more number of foreigners. While I do think, well, foreigners add a lot in terms of quality, the quantity of foreigners doesn't really help anyone because, well, it's harsh on the budgets for the for the Indian Super League and I-League teams because, well, they're anyway struggling with money and then Indian football players do not get enough opportunities. And then there are clubs like ATK and Kerala Blasters who are investing heavily into foreigners, getting in big names, which is great for the game. Yeah, great for their teams, maybe not so much. Good to see the coach finally speaking on this and, well, love to hear your thoughts on this as well. 
Now let's move to social heat map to best blog comments made on SPF. This one is from Naveen Peter. This might come across as a not so popular opinion, but don't think Gurpreet should be awarded this. He's talking about the Arjuna Award here. For that reason, no one from the current setup does, except Chetri. The list of achievers include guys who won accolades at the international stage, and that's not the case with football in India. If India would have made it to knock out of the Asian Cup, it still would have made some sense. But not now. Don't know what message this sends out. It's like Deepak Karmakar being handed a Khel Ratna for finishing fourth in the Rio Olympics. Now, Naveen, I'm glad you mentioned that it's a not so popular opinion at the beginning of your comment because, well, it's something that I disagree with completely. I, well, I don't know where you're coming from. Listen, football is a sport that's, that's improving the country, and Gupi Singh Sandhu is a footballer that has made the country proud. He played in the Europa League. If not for the injury, he would have played the whole game. He went to Europe, competed at the highest level, grinded it out, and now he's a national team goalkeeper. He's also captain the Indian football team. But what out there is there to achieve for footballers right now in the country? Because that, that is the pinnacle, isn't it? Because that's what we are all asking for. Indian football players need to go out and play in Europe. A player has done that and now we are questioning why he's come to country and won the Arjuna Award. You want two things, right? You want a footballer to do well and you want football to become a recognized sport in this country. Both of these things happen in this scenario and then we're still complaining. That's a little hypocritical of us. Now, Naveen, I'm not personally going against you, but it's something, an opinion that you've posted and it's something that a lot of people out there agree with. So I just want to address this once and for all. As Indian football fans, take what you get. Aman says, why don't Indian players go and play in Australia, Japan, Korea or any other top Asian country? Players can improve in Japanese and Korean leagues as well. ISL isn't the best league in Asia. Now, man, I think you make a comment that we've well, talked about in the past, but I think the more this is reiterated, the better. Yes, Indian football players need to play in Asia first before they can make the eventual step. It's funny how it comes right after I talked about a player who has already played in Europe. But again, even playing in uh, leagues like the J League and the A League will be a massive upgrade over where we are playing right now, the Indian football players. Now, there are two sides to the story. When I was discussing this with the SPF team, uh, Johnson, a colleague of mine, came up with a great argument where he talked about Baiching Bhutia and Gauramangi Singh actually going to Malaysia and Australia to play. But no Indian football fans really paid attention to it. And then there's another side to it, which, by the way, I agreed with. He was right. The second part of it is, well, there are Indian football players right now who know they will be paid a lot more money in the Indian Super League than they will be paid in, in a J League or an A League or, well, somewhere in Malaysia. Which is, well, well, a career path, if they want to take, they can take it, but it's not really for the benefit of Indian football. So, well, the two sides to the whole coin. Now, let's move to Sudo Pandit, where the Indian football posts that impressed us the most. This one is from Richard Hood. Replicate the Korean and Scottish league models that churn out 35 plus league games a season. More for sporting reasons than commercial. They want their top national team players in the best leagues and the only way to attract attention is to showcase them across a proper calendar of games. So Richard brings us back to exactly where we were. The number of games we play in Indian football. Well, Richard is someone that knows a lot about Indian football. He is one of the few UFIA license holder coaches in this country and a top, top contributor to football in this country. So, well, his opinion is always an informed one. So even he sees the need for a lot more games to be happening. If you look at the number of games that are played in the other leagues in the world, even if they are not major footballing countries, a lot of games, they play a lot of games. And we, not a lot. Like if you look at a top tier ISL side, how many games do we play? Around 20, 25 tops? Well, that, that is if you make it to the knockouts and uh, also play the Super Cup. There's a lot of variables that come in and other teams don't really get to play at all. So the footballers in those teams don't get enough match practice and that needs to change majorly. Maybe incorporating a Super Cup during the Indian Super League and then having a Durham Cup as a pre-season tournament and then maybe also having regional tournaments where footballers are encouraged to participate. I think that would solve a lot of issues. So guys, that's it for this episode of Half Holy. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, I've been Ankur Sharma. You are the Super Football, the home of any football fans. I'll see you in the next video. And guys, please stop asking me about Omid Singh. I don't know where he is.